Okay, in Astronomy 105 today we'll be looking at Chapter 2 and that involves discovering the universe for yourself. What you might need uh, during this video is the four star charts that we handed out in class. If you don't have those, go over to danbruton.com. I put those on my personal website over on the lower right hand side. You can click on that PDF star chart link and then download them and print them here. I can also get you a printout during class if you happen to lose yours. I do want you to write all over these um, and during this video so you can kind of get an idea about how they use, how they are used to locate celestial objects. This is one of the first pictures that's located inside it, the beginning of chapter two and you can see these are stars that are circling around the pole and so this is most likely, well, that's got to be Polaris. It's not exactly in the center of that swirl but it's pretty close and Polaris is located right up here on the top of the celestial sphere. The way that you begin um, making star charts is you imagine this celestial sphere cut up into different pieces. You can take a knife. Oh, wait, that's a butter knife. Let me, uh, let me pause the video and get a better knife. Okay, okay, I, here, here's a better knife right here. All right, here we go. I've always wanted to do this. All right, so imagine cutting this. That's a great animation, by the way. Um, Imagine cutting the top of this celestial sphere off and then what's left over when you do that? Just uh, basically a bowl. And then imagine putting your palm up on top of this and just squashing this onto a flat sheet of paper. Well that is star chart number one. So locate star chart number one in your collection. Bring that to the top. You can pull the staples out and uh, kind of take a closer look at this particular star chart. So this is star chart number one. You'll look right in the middle and the center of this is the North Celestial Pole. And you'll see that just to the upper right of that is a relatively bright star. Uh, that's the North Star, also known as Polaris. The sizes of these dots represent the brightnesses of stars. And you can see there's a star over here called Capella. I think Vega is around. Here's Vega over here. They're bigger dots. They're brighter stars than the North Star. The thing that makes the North Star unusual or I guess not unusual, well, okay, it's unusual. It stands out is that it's so close to the North Celestial Pole and it stays relatively fixed in the sky, as we'll see. So take your pen or pencil and start marking on the star charts. One of the things I want you to do first is to circle zero superscript H, one superscript H, two superscript H. That's probably enough like that. Then draw an arrow going kind of clockwise like that and right below that, or above that, right, right ascension. So these are the um, units of measure for angle that we discussed in the last video. So um, one hour of right ascension corresponds to about 15 degrees. Or you can look at going all the way around the circle, zero to 24 hours um, is also equal to zero to 360 degrees. It's just another unit of measure. Just like in distance units, you have feet and meters and angular measurements, at least in astronomy, you have degrees and you also have, um, in the case of right ascension, hours. Circle a few more of these measurements and you can see these are in degrees and it's uh, looking at the angular measurement toward and away from Polaris and the celestial equator is actually located down here. So zero degrees would be here as you move toward Polaris where you would get positive 90 right there. Draw an arrow on your star chart and label that declination. This is the um, coordinate very similar to how latitude is measured. Go ahead and uh, use your pen or pencil to label that star the North Star so that you know that Polaris is also known as the North Star. And then connect the dots down here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, so connect the dots and you can see that this uh, collection of stars looks like a dipper. This is the Big Dipper. It's not really a constellation. You'll notice I put it in quotation marks like that. The constellation is really Ursa Major, which is a big bear. And you can kind of see a bear if this is the nose of the bear and the rear end of the bear and the front paw. And, and somehow it looks like the bear is wearing a saddle. I don't, I don't get that. Anyway, so you, you basically look at the seven brighter stars of Ursa Major and you come up with another recognizable pattern it's not an official constellation though. It is something that's very helpful in locating the North Star since Polaris is not the brightest star in the sky. 
we sometimes need some help in locating it. Stars move, well, they slowly rotate around the sky, so you, so you have to kind of work at finding Polaris sometimes. Um, once you find a recognizable pattern of the Big Dipper, you locate the two stars out at the end called Dubi and Merak. These are also called the pointer stars. And if you follow this red arrow, it points right to Polaris. So that's one of the things that I use to kind of verify that the star that I'm looking at is the North Star. If I use these, uh, you know, two pointer stars of the Big Dipper. Polaris is where the Little Dipper begins. You can see that it also kind of has a handle and a cup and it pours into the Big Dipper like this. Again, not a constellation or not an official constellation. It's just a recognizable pattern of stars, a subset of Ursa Minor, the small bear. And, you know, I was looking all around for images that kind of look like a bear. Let's see, I look for this one. I couldn't make that one work. This one didn't look like it worked. I've never seen a bear with a tail that way. None of it really seems to work. And you really come to the conclusion after looking at a lot of constellation figures and seeing how many variations there are on this that it's really just um, a pattern recognition game and you're trying to use these collection of stars to recognize patterns so that you can identify stars um, by name. So what a constellation really is are just recognizable patterns of stars in the sky. Um, how many are there? 88 constellations. Um, the surface of the celestial sphere is finite. You can only break it into a finite number of, of um, regions that contain stars. So there's 88 of those, and Orion is certainly one of those. 12 of the 88, so I'm not saying 12 plus 88. I'm saying 12 of the 88 constellations are located along the ecliptic. Now, the ecliptic is something we talked about in the last video. There are um, 12 well, primarily 12 constellations along the ecliptic, and these are referred to as the zodiac constellations. Um, and you've heard of that word in the case of astrology as well as astronomy now. Um, I want to mention one thing because I saw a homework question about this with the word region in there. If you look at the constellation lines on here, you can see that there's this light blue background around these constellations that defines a region. So constellation boundaries define a region and we can say that uh, constellations are just a region of the sky with you know connected by lines the stars themselves are not connected really in any way uh, historically most of the time the, even gravitationally they're not uh, connected it just happens to be in that direction of the sky as seen from earth you might be wondering about the big dipper and the little dipper uh, since they're not constellations what are they we call them asterisms. Uh, these are also recognizable patterns of stars in the sky that are not one of the 88. Uh, Big Dipper, Little Dipper, uh, Northern Cross, Summer Triangle, uh, just to name a handful of those. Um, oh, did I go too fast? In case you wanted to get that for your notes, um, I think I'm going to try to print this out as a PDF file as well and upload it to D2L so that you can follow along that way. I'll try to do that occasionally when I when I can. Uh, make something that's uh, easy to print. Now this is a, an, a, a view of the, the sky facing north and uh, this is the North Star. How do I know? Well I look at the two pointer stars. Here's the you know the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. It's not always so obvious in this night sky. I think the author of this image probably enhanced it or put some haze around each one of these so that you can more easily identify the pointer stars that point to Polaris and the Little Dipper pouring into the bigger, uh, bigger Dipper in this image. Let's turn this uh, star chart upside down. So rotate it all the way around so that you're looking at these two things, um, these two constellations. This one's Cassiopeia and you can just kind of connect the dots there. It's supposed to be a crown with a queen in there. I don't really ever see a queen. I sometimes see a throne if you have enough of um, the background stars visible and if it's, the sky is dark enough. She really have to work work at it. This is uh, Cepheus over here and you could put in quotation marks the king. Uh, to me it looks like a house but uh, I guess on a good night if you strain 
you can really see uh, a king and queen really clearly on some nights. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's find the constellation, uh, not the constellation, let's find the coordinates of um, Capella, one of the stars on star chart number one. Um, turning the star chart back over, Capella is over to the right hand side. Let's zoom in on it a little bit, circle it like that. And then I want you to take a pencil and maybe a straight edge like the edge of a piece of paper or a ruler and draw a line between the North Celestial Pole, which is in the center, go right through the star and then go out in this direction. Our goal is to find the right ascension and declination. That's what I, really what I meant by RA and DEC, right ascension and declination. So we said that the right ascension was measured radially around the outside, and you can see five superscript H and six superscript H. Each one of these tick marks it corresponds to five minutes of right ascension. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So you can see 30 is actually halfway. Uh, surprise, 30 minutes is half an hour. And you can go all the way to 60 minutes. It's an angular extent though. Now there is a connection between the time hour and the angle hour, but in this case, these are really angular measurements. So if we were to estimate what that um, right ascension would be, it's gonna be five hours and probably like 15 minutes. I'll, I'll write it up here in a second. Now what you can also do, I just did it, okay, sorry. Right ascension, five superscript H, 15 superscript M. You can write that on your star chart. And feel free to write all over these because we can print you out some more or you can print out more of your own as well. Uh, you'll be using uh, fresh star charts in lab as, as part of your um, constellation and star exercises for the first few labs. For this one, I, yeah, I didn't really make that arc very well. It's supposed to be an arc going all the way around like this. So that it's almost like I came down, but it really needs to go off a little bit like that. So it intersects the declination axis and here you can see that the declination is about 46 degrees, positive 46 degrees. So here's 40 and 50 and 46. We'll do another one in class um, on Friday just to get the hang of that. Now let's take uh, the knife that we had there and let's cut the bottom part off. So halfway between the celestial equator, uh, the celestial equator and the south celestial pole, halfway between there, I'm gonna take that knife I guess it was already red. Nice. Okay. And you got a bottom bowl. And then you take that and you squash it upward, I guess, onto a piece of paper. And it makes this bowl flat. And so there's your bowl. And let's look in the center of that star chart and you see that there's no star there. And so we kind of got lucky in the northern hemisphere to have a relatively bright star near the north celestial pole going below the equator of the Earth. There's no such luck. There's not a bright star near the South Celestial Pole. Um, yeah, Toucan. I guess I should have backed up on this one right here. So there are some constellations that I've never seen. One of those is a Toucan uh, right there. And I was trying to visualize it. And I guess that's what somebody saw in the sky one day. Um, there's some other ones in here. Let's see what else did we see. This is just a rectangle. And that's a telescope, and I think there's a microscope, like microscopium, and okay, and there's a ship with sails. All right, most of these constellations I've only seen in uh, in photographs. The Scorpius, you could actually see see it from Nacogdoches, but you can't see, let's say, within that ring right there. So we're not going to use this star chart in Nacogdoches or the night sky, or even for night lab. I really I only included it to give you a full celestial sphere uh, in paper form. Now let's kind of cut this right down through the uh, vernal equinox, right? We said that this was the yellow sphere that went above and below. There's the vernal equinox. Let's cut it right there. And also let's go to the other side and cut it on the autumnal equinox. I'm not gonna do the artwork for that one. I'm just gonna do it like this and then, uh, you know, Wait, that was supposed to separate. Anyway, so what you're going to do is you take this half after you cut it here, squash it onto one piece of paper, take the other half, squash it onto another piece of paper, and that's your star chart two and three. So these are going to be on the back sides 
of star chart one and four, and so these are more rectangular. Star chart number two has a very recognizable constellation in the middle with uh, Orion, and uh, I want you to uh, label the celestial equator because that um, that barrel that we you know we cut right here, we cut the the bowl off the top of the bowl off the bottom. We're left with a barrel. Um, that right there, that metal band becomes the celestial equator that's right in the middle. So make sure you label that celestial equator. And uh, here is our tilted circle, our ecliptic, which is inclined with respect to the celestial equator, 23 and a half degrees. The dates along these ecliptic, uh, along, excuse me, the dates along the ecliptic rather corresponds to the location of the sun on that particular day. Uh, here's an example over here that I think that's September 22nd or 23rd. That's the first day of fall. So that is your autumnal equinox. And I bet you know what this one's called. It's at the origin, so it's uh, zero hours and also... Uh, oh wait, I'm sorry, that's zero degrees. So there's zero hours down here and zero degrees right there. This is the origin. This is where you measure uh, right ascension and declination from. That is the vernal equinox. I think you'll see that question um, on some of your labs. It'll say, Where do, where's, where's the origin? And you'll say, uh, uh, Berlin Equinox, zero degrees declination, zero hours right ascension. The top of this, can you guess what that was called? That one says June 22nd. It's pretty hot that day. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so that is where uh, the sun stops. So it goes up. And it stops and comes back down. There's the summer solstice. Um, of course, you can connect the dots for Orion if you want to. You can see it has a couple of hunting dogs, Canis Major, and here's the brightest star in the night sky, Sirius. And where's the wiener dog at? Oh, there it is, Canis Minor, with Procyon being the brighter star in the small dog. Um, okay, we'll get into other constellations later. I wanted to also point out that I do have declination labeled along the vertical axis and then the horizontal axis is your right ascension. In class we'll pick Sirius I think and we'll find the right ascension and declination of it just to make sure you have the right idea with these things. Flip over to star chart number three and also label the celestial equator through the middle of this one after you have circled declination and right ascension. So there's celestial equator this is where the ecliptic dips down below the celestial equator and obviously looking at the date there that's the first day of spring so that's the, the vernal equinox and this is because this star chart overlaps the other one on the left hand side we're seeing that down here at the bottom so dad got married December 22nd summer oh, I'm sorry winter solstice is when this the the uh, Sun stops its uh, southern progression and starts to come back upward so this is the autumnal equinox if you're looking at the dates over there. Let's connect three stars together uh, that are in different constellations. One of them is um, Altar, the other one is Vega, and the other one is Deneb. So these are three bright stars that stand out in the night sky. Um, they're in three different constellations, but it, it kind of helps you navigate. For example, what I'll do is I'll use Deneb to kind of look at Cygnus the Swan with the long neck, the you know the wings going this way and the long neck stretching out into the center of the triangle, with Alberio at the head of the Swan, or I'll see the harp over here for Lyra for Vega, or I'll look at Aquila the Eagle. Uh, this is called the Summer Triangle, and as you can see in quotation marks, it is not a constellation is an example of an asterism. So just write Summer Triangle. There's an interesting story about this constellation here, the Eagle Aquila. Um, you might recognize this symbol from television. If not, let me give you a hint. <laughs> communicator badge and also the icon that is used in that movie and television show uh, comes from this constellation so the the symbol Star Trek symbol yeah I sometimes call this the Star Trek symbol constellation because I'm, I'm I have a hard time seeing an eagle 
with that collection of stars. Let's look at a chart exercise before we move on. And let's see, you know what? I think we're gonna do the star chart exercise in class. I'm gonna challenge you before class to see if you can locate the 12 zodiac constellations and circle their names. Uh, see if you can find the coordinates of Betelgeuse, and don't say it three times. And we're also gonna look at Sirius. And then uh, also we're gonna look at the right ascension and declination of the sun um, on the day uh, that we uh, are going to be in class next on Friday. All right, thanks for hanging in there with me. I'll see you soon.